Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. I've got a rather positive piece for you in this video. It's from Tron Weekly, and it's titled, Why Ripple Would Be the Succeeding Cross-Border Settlements Leader Ultimately. And uh, I've noticed, I don't know if it's just lately, maybe it's been going on for longer uh, than I realized and just haven't come to this website enough. Maybe I should, but damn, they talk about Ripple and XRP a lot. My God, it seems to me like... All the websites out there, so the, the biggest names, uh, AMB Crypto, there's Daily Hoddle, Tron Weekly, you'd think they'd talk mostly about Tron, wouldn't you? Well, you'd be wrong. They, they probably talk more about XRP and Ripple than, than they do Tron anyway. I find it highly fascinating, but in the end, can you blame them? This is where all the activity is. This is what people want to know about. That's why it's in the news. And I'll, I'll say it's interesting, uh, you know, even though this is a, an XRP-centric channel, that's the audience I seek to have listened to videos, because let's be real, if I'm going to be making videos as a fun hobby, I better be interested in what I'm talking about, so I like to surround myself with like-minded individuals, even though I, I do, of course, encourage diversity of thought. Uh, Bitcoin maximalists, some of them will come listen to my channel, but really, I think that they're really... Um, they're clicking on this Ripple and XRP stuff. Well, I'm, I'm suspecting anyway. It's speculation. Fine. But why else is Ripple and XRP on all the websites? It's on Bitcoinist.com. It's on NewsBTC.com. Every freaking where. So anyway, I will say, though, this is a very positive piece. I want to sh run through this, and I want to share with you my thoughts. And then I've got a fun piece uh and I want to share with you, it's about Tim Draper stating that Bitcoin, and okay, Bitcoin, fine, but think what it means for the entire asset class when I say this. Bitcoin is 10 to 100 times bigger than the internet. So we're going to hop into all that here. Now, before we get going, if you would, please delicately tap that like button. And if you're a fan of Ripple and XRP, my friend, you done came to the right place. Go ahead and subscribe to the Moon Lambo channel. Time to get rocking and rolling here. It states, with each day that passes, blockchain technologies and fintech solutions such as Ripple are changing the money transfer landscape, solving critical problems, and replacing existing systems in some cases. And let me tell you, that's absolutely what Ripple is doing. Uh, I, I wonder, I, drop a comment below on this. Is Swift scared of what's happening here? Are they alarmed? They seem to be reacting. they got GPI. They've got that going on. But they haven't fixed the settlement problem. They have literally no solution for that. It's, hey, we've got quicker GPI, which is just the payment rails. Uh, nothing faster in terms of settlement. If I were them, I'd be a little bit scared. Times there are changing. In the last swell, 2018, R.J. Pittman, eBay's former head of product, agreed that Ripple, XRP, was making headways to become the leading solution provider in the cross-border settlement industry. Ripple is coming up as the most suitable technology that is addressing existing challenges surrounding the payments and transaction industry. At present, real-time financial institutions around the world are partnering with RippleNet to improve their cross-border settlement services. By partnering with the protocol, Ripple is introducing these financial institutions to the growing global network of institutions that are contributing to the growth of the Internet of Value. And that is absolutely true. So I want to say, and we have to acknowledge this, of course, but I say it's a positive. Most of the entities that are on RippleNet, they're utilizing just X, uh, X current. But understand that every single X current customer out there is a potential X rapid customer. And we know, thanks to a Ripple employee that uh, was uh, speaking the, well, I, I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of funny. I can't remember who it came from, honestly, but it was... It was something that seemed to come off the cuff during some sort of speaking event. But this employee, she said that there are um, over 20 XRapid customers using the production version of XRapid, which, of course, uses XRP. That was announced within the last couple months or so. But it wasn't a formal announcement from Ripple, and I found that fascinating. But anyway, it's amazing to me you've got that many customers using X, XRapid with it being on the market less than a year. It was launched in early October of 2018. Anyway, the piece continues. As a global payment solutions provider, the U.S.-based blockchain firm is avail uh, availing financial payment solutions to the world, facilitating the frictionless transfer of value across entities leading to an Internet of value. Thanks to its careful, structured platform, the Ripple protocol ensures the transfer of funds from parties as, uh, is as easy as sending information electronically. Uh, that's what they do call, by the way, the Internet of Value, anyway, uh, and the lowest cost possible. By allowing holders to transfer value directly without using corresponding financial institutions, 
Ripple, in parentheses, XRP, offers solutions that are reducing the cost of liquidation. Uh, yeah, they're, they, what they mean is they're solving a liquidity problem. Liquidation is not exactly the same thing, but that's okay. We're just going to look over at that. This is, after all, a piece coming from crypto media. It's not ever, it's against the rules. As you know, it's against the rules to go ahead and spell check any of your work, uh, seek a second opinion on structurally how sentences look. You don't do that if you're in crypto media, you're going to get fired. So here's a tweet from Wrath of Kahneman. Now, this guy, I love the stuff he just. He seeks out, and I've covered on the channel before, he seeks out stuff that um, maybe other people wouldn't catch. Some of it's like, uh, I don't know, it kind of gets into the minutia of things, but I like it. And so here's a tweet that they highlighted from him. And this is from, uh, this is from August 15th, by the way. So this is a new piece, but this tweet is from August 15th. And he tweeted at, watching, Swift may run instant cross-border payment trials in India with GPI. Three Ripple banks involved, SBI, ICIC, HDFC. The two prior trials were in Australia and Singapore. If Dubai comes after India, that would be something. And then the piece continues here. As the economic trends, migration patterns, and international trade continue to change and evolve, the market size of the cross-border settlement industry continues to grow as well. At the moment, Cross-border payments are dominated by financial institutions and banks, taking up 95% of the market share. However, their cross-border money transfer services are characterized by delays, lack of transparency, and high tariffs. Now, i got to say this. As it pertains to tariffs, I actually um, I haven't heard that uh, cited before, as, as far as I can recall, by anybody in the XRP community or anybody by Ripple. And um, I didn't decide to <laughs> Google it uh, to, 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 for the sake of this video, limited time. If anybody is aware of specific news relating to tariffs and the problems that they're imposing as far as uh, cross-border payments just in general, please drop a link below if you have any sort of knowledge on that. I'd be curious to look into that further. But again, I can't just off the top of my head, looking into this for almost two years now, coming up in November, two years for me, uh, I can't re re recall the tariffs specifically being cited. It's always about, yes, delays because of the correspondent banking system, and uh, sometimes entities are in different time zones, this and that, a lack of transparency because... In terms of the way Swift works, especially the messaging system, it's uh, unidirectional, uh, whereas Xcurrent is actually bidirectional, and so you get communication back and forth, and you can find out if uh, the, you know the, the the messaging portion in terms of payment actually goes through. So those are completely legit high tariffs. I've not heard cited before, and find that fascinating. So anyway, uh, piece continues. These long-standing inadequacies have created an opportunity for new players like Ripple uh, that, that can resolve these difficulties thanks to its cutting-edge technology. With each day that passes, blockchain technologies and fintech solutions are changing the money transfer landscape, solving critical problems, and replacing existing systems in some cases. The global commerce and payment sector are made up of many different use cases such as disbursement, shared economy, remittances, and banking, which take the most significant percentage of the current market. In the current period, cross-border payments are perceived as cumbersome because of the processes that are attached to the activity, the lack of transparency on tariffs, the involvement of multiple financial institutions across different locations, and delays have been significant concerns for the industry. And uh, they've been concerned since, what, like, 19 dickety two? Like, how, how long? How long has SWIFT been around? Was it, like, 19, late 60s? I actually should look that up. I've been questioning that as I brought it up over the last, I don't know, however many weeks. Uh, every time something like that comes up, when, when did SWIFT get founded? Was it late 60s, early 70s? I just, I need a refresher on that. But it's been a while, and uh, they have not come up with a solution for, uh, for the liquidity problem because, the, frankly, the technology didn't exist. It all comes down to trust. Now, here's a tweet from Tod Hodor that they included on this, and this is from August 30th, so it's not that old. And he, he wrote, and this is a, he's actually tweeting this out, but it's a quote from Jeremy Light, Ripple VP Strategic Accounts. And the tweet is, There is a clear and growing use case for crypto as a bridge currency. As a bridge between one fiat currency and another, it solves the liquidity issues in cross-border payments, and this will be a game changer. I could not agree more. Given what I just stated... And it's, this is just a matter of fact. Outside of cryptocurrencies being used as a source of liquidity and a solution for the fractured nature of global payments and settlement, you know, outside of crypto, 
Humans have not come up with a solution, and again, it comes down to trust. Humans have not come up with a solution for this problem, period. Ripple is the only one going to market in the way that they're going to market. So if they don't succeed, who the hell is? Who is? Because I will tell you, realistically, the only other solution out there, and we're nowhere near approaching this, is if individuals were using cryptocurrencies in their own daily life and using that in kind of a similar fashion of... uh, of X Rapid, if they wanted to do, just like do it manually, whether it's with Bitcoin or Litecoin or wh- whatever, they'll pick a cryptocurrency. Because with X Rapid, this is all automated, but you could use Bitcoin if you wanted to do it manually. Uh, if people are actually using Bitcoin as, a, as an actual currency, maybe some would would utilize it like this. But you know, you take your Bitcoin, put it on an exchange, transfer it to another exchange in the destination country, and then have uh, that sold and then transferred into whatever fiat currency you want. You know, you could do that. You could do that to convert it if you want to do it manually. Or if you have cryptocurrencies that are actually being used as money, you no longer have to worry about that. If you're if you're in a hypothetical world where people aren't using cryptocurrencies, or I'm sorry, aren't using fiat currencies, well, there you go. You just pick a crypto and you use it, and then you don't need what Ripple is doing. Hypothetically, we're nowhere near that, and that's why I say even if that use case comes to fruition, super duper, it's not like I'm going to fight it. If that's what the world wants, okay, fine. We're nowhere near that. What makes sense right now, what can be used today, is XRP. Right now, today. And it is being used. It is being adopted. And there's no other solution for fixing the problem unless you're you're someone going to force the world over to stop using fiat currencies and start using cryptocurrencies, which today are highly volatile. You can't just shoehorn people into this. It needs to happen organically over time, if it even happens at all. And maybe it will, but I get the sense that it would take decades if we ever get there. Anyway, peace continues here. Different companies, actually, let me hop down. This part I didn't really want to read. Let me hop down to this next subheading, which is titled, The World Will Read the Writing on the Wall, Ripple is the Future of Cross-Border Settlements. At present, the market has many significant players who are offering cross-border money transfer services around the world. Ripple, as an open-source distributed settlement platform that supports near-instant settlements with minimal fees, is on the pathway to becoming the leading technology in the industry. Ripple's technology utilizes pathfinding algorithms to find a pair of currency swaps that facilitate the lowest possible tariffs. Somebody tell me more about this tariff thing. Uh, Are implemented for the uh, cross-currency transactions. And that's the bulk of what I wanted to cover in this piece here. I don't want to read the whole thing to you in this particular case. It's uh, it's not that long, but kind of long. But that's the meat of what I wanted to get across to you here. And so it's a positive piece, and I wanted to share my thoughts on this. But, look, I'm telling you, and this is not financial advice, but there is no other solution. And given that XRP must be used to fix this problem, and there's nobody else that's even a close second in fixing this problem and utilizing a cryptocurrency, given that businesses are being built on top of the XRP ledger to make this actually happen, what do you think long-term that might do for, uh, for for people that invest in XRP today. What, what do you think that might do? Because as you see actual utility, as you see real adoption, that instills confidence. And I, I, I really believe that as uh, you get institutional investors coming in, and there will be more re- retail speculators too, people will want to put their money into XRP, not financial advice. Please take that to heart. I'm always getting new subscribers. I want to make sure that I'm. I'm sorry if you, you that listening to me long. You hear me long time. You hear me saying that a lot. I have to do it, or I wouldn't feel right. This is not financial advice, and this could all go south. I, I'm just t- sharing you my opinions, and I'm very optimistic. But there, like I said, there's no other solution. So, what do you think is going to happen long term? I think we're going to have a multi-trillion dollar asset class for crypto. I think you'll have individual coins that uh, are adopted based on utility that have staying power and on their own will have market caps in, in the trillions. I, I believe that is highly likely. That's just my personal opinion. Let me hop into the next piece here. This is titled, Tim Draper says Bitcoin is 10 to 100 times bigger than the internet, which is quite a claim. And by the way, I saw this guy live. I was at a crypto conference uh, I think it was, it was October of last year in Los Angeles. And he came out. He's a fun guy. I got to tell you, I don't know what he thinks about XRP, really. I know he's a Bitcoin guy, and I got that. That's fine. Everybody has entitled their opinions, and people have their have a right to be wrong. <laughs> you know, but I like the guy. And he came out, and he was trying to get everybody all excited, and he started doing jumping jacks on the stage. <laughs> so anyway. anyway, the piece continues. Bitcoin is currently trading in the green, and the most important coin in the market is priced at $9,626.30 on CMC. 
We know that part's not true, not in full, right? XRP is the most important coin on the market. Come on now. Tim Draper is still focused on the long-term trajectory of the actual technology that surrounds Bitcoin, and he addresses the reasons for which he believes that Bitcoin and the blockchain tech will be able to transform entire industries. He said that they will unleash a massive impact on society. He's talking about a bigger impact than the internet itself. He's an early investor in Skype, Tesla, Hotmail, Twitter, Coinbase, and more. Uh, you know, that should tell you something, though. He is a forward-thinking guy, and he is no dope. He really is no dope. Even, I don't care. Uh, look, like I said, everybody's got a right to be wrong. Whatever he thinks about XRP, because he's certainly not uh, speaking about the actual utility of it. Not that I've seen, anyway. But look at that. Getting involved with all these things at the, at the outset of their inception. You know, Skype, Tesla, Hotmail, Twitter, Coinbase. I think it's cool stuff, anyway. Draper said that when the internet came around, we were very excited and we funded a lot of companies, and the internet transformed communications and information and gaming and entertainment media. Draper continued and explained that now we have new technologies, and he believes that they start with Bitcoin, quote, this magic technology that has somehow allowed us to have a trusted global currency that isn't tied to any political force. He continued and said that Bitcoin is open, transparent, global, frictionless, and the technology that built Bitcoin also has other applications. For instance, the blockchain allows for a, quote, perfect ledger. <laughs> it keeps perfect track of money, or it can keep track of data. We recommend... Oh, wait, I don't want to read that part. In other news... No, I don't want to read that either. Yeah, that was the gist of it. Uh, so, yeah. Um, look, I the sentiment around what he said, I like it, <clears throat> and... Uh, Although it is, I think, fact that there are tons of maximalists out there, the market is going to figure this stuff out, and level heads that are not, not ideological driven will prevail. That's part of what I believe. That's a big part of what I believe, with my most important investment thesis being that utility will win the day. So I certainly hope I'm right about XRP. I see it actually being adopted. I see it as the only cryptocurrency today that's being used in the commercial production of anything even though there admittedly are other projects that have major big name partnerships, what other coins are actually being used? I see VeChain getting cited, but the coin itself is not being used in the commercial production of anything. So there, and nothing against other. Pro I, I want other projects to thrive. I really do. I want to see a very healthy ecosystem. I am not a maximalist. I am purely most excited about XRP because I see it being used today. I see wide adoption. I see Ripple as the greatest cheerleader for XRP. And uh, the Spring Initiative, to me, all of it is absolutely incredible. I think it's cause for excitement. I think it's reasonable to feel positive and a little bit excited, despite the negative price action we're seeing, because the prices we see today, they're not based on utility. That's the opposite of my uh, investment thesis. That, that's based on speculators that buy and sell based on emotion. That's it, from my perspective, or at least largely it. But you can tell me what you think below. That's it for this video. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say right. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.